my name is Eva and welcome to this channel. Today I have an extra special video because I am working with my lovely friend Tynan to bring you a video about cervical caps and diaphragms, which are two types of non-hormonal birth control methods that can be used by people who have vulvas and cervixes and vaginas and all of those types of reproductive parts. So we're going to jump into the video and I'm going to be kind of flitting in and out to ask Tynan some questions. I learned a lot and I hope you do too. So let's jump into the video. Hi there, my name is Tynan Rea and I work as a doula and sex and pregnancy and parenthood coach and I used to be an apprentice of Anari's Apothecary where we are filming from today. And I'm here to show you some barrier methods of birth control that a lot of people think aren't on the market anymore or that aren't that effective and I'm here to dispel some of those myths as well as tell you some information about how they work and what they're made of. Uh, so we'll be talking about the Kaya diaphragm today as well as the FemCap. These are barrier methods of birth control. So what does that mean? Barrier methods of birth control basically mean they stop, they stop sperm from being able to reach the egg. So they create a barrier around the cervical opening, otherwise known as the os, and they have a gel that you put inside the diaphragm or the FemCap and sperm get trapped in that gel and then they die and so they don't make it over to the egg. Both of these methods of birth control are made with medical grade silicone. It also doesn't degrade over time at the same rate as other plastics. So although these products typically have a suggestion of replacing every three to five years or so, much like a, a menstrual cup, there's no real reason to replace it unless there's a hole or it's you know, obviously degrading to a degree that it's no longer keeping a seal around the cervical opening or anything like that. Or you can totally follow their suggestions it's up to you. So the first product we're going to be looking at is the FemCap and this is a cervical cap meaning it fits over the cervix and like I was saying before what we do is we put a little bit of the Contra gel, a spermicidal gel. This product is all natural, totally vegan and doesn't have nanoxyl 9 in it so it's not going to inflame or irritate your vagina. It's, it's kind of got like a salty lemonade flavor to it. So what you would do is you put about a teaspoon uh, of the gel on the inside of the cap and then you'd put a little bit of the gel on the rim of the cap and then you would insert it in through the vagina and you want it to cover the cervical opening so what is the cervical opening also known as the os when you're menstruating and when you're ovulating it's going to be open so it's going to have like a little divot in the center a little dimple and that's the area that you're going to want to cover with your cervical cap when you're not ovulating or menstruating, it's closed and it's gonna feel more like the tip of your nose and sort of round like the tip of your nose. It's gonna poke out a little bit. And its positioning will change throughout your cycle and throughout the month. So just because it's in one spot one time doesn't mean it will be in the next spot next time. So before putting in your cap, it's important to locate your cervix first. Once you have it in and you think you have it in place, then just run your finger around the edges to make sure that it is in fact covering the entirety of the opening. If my thumb is your cervical opening and you kind of have it half on, half off, then that's not perfect use. And you want to get it right over that cervical opening. You don't have to put it in right before having sex. You can actually put it in a few hours before having sex. The only important thing to remember is that you must take it out at about six hours after having sex and you do need to leave it in for that time to make sure any sperm that's been trapped in the gel have properly died. See this little strap thing on the fem cap? It's useless, don't use it. In fact, it might hurt you. If you try to take out the fem cap without breaking a seal over the cervical opening first, uh, you're just gonna pull on your cervical opening, which is actually pretty uncomfortable for some people. Just ignore that. Otherwise, it's a great device. So it's Eva jumping in. So how effective are these birth control methods? Like I was saying before, these methods are very effective. So perfect use with the fem cap is 98%, which is pretty great. That's actually very close to uh, hormonal methods of birth control. Um, and perfect use means putting it over the area, having, making sure that it's sealed every time, and also using it every time. And what makes it so effective and a little bit more effective than the Kaya diaphragm is that it has three different sizes. This is a 22 millimeter size, so that's referring to the diameter. This is the next size up, which is a 26 millimeter diameter. And then this is the next size up, which is a uh, 30 millimeter diameter. And why there's three different sizes is for different people's experiences with reproduction. So the first size is for anybody who hasn't given uh, vaginal birth and who hasn't even been pregnant yet. So this is for somebody who has 
no prior history of pregnancy whatsoever. This size is for somebody who has been pregnant but hasn't had a vaginal birth. So maybe you had a C-section birth or you had a miscarriage or an abortion. This would be the size for you. And then this size, uh, the 30 millimeters, is for anybody who's given vaginal birth. So obviously you've been pregnant and you've vaginally delivered. This is the size for you. The next product is the Kaya Diaphragm. And the Kaya Diaphragm is, like I said before, also made with medical grade silicone. Um, it works very similar to the cervical cap in that you want to put a little bit of the gel, put about a teaspoon of gel inside the diaphragm, and then you put a little bit over the rim as well. And it works the same way. The device is holding the gel in place so that sperm who try to get through, get trapped in the gel, and they die, and they don't make it to the egg. So the thing that I like about the diaphragm is that it's a little bit larger, and it's really easy to insert. You just, it's very, very flexible, so you can put it in in a very thin manner, and then when you take it out, you just pull on this little tab bit here, and when you pull it out with your finger, it automatically breaks the seal, and you can easily take it out. The only thing is because of its larger design, uh, for all that it makes it a little easier to insert and it's easier to check if it's perfectly covering your cervix, it, one size fits 80% of people. The other thing about this, this product as opposed to the Femcap is because it's larger, for some people who are prone to UTIs, the pressure on the urethra from the inside can sometimes irritate things and, and cause UTIs or cause pain and discomfort. So if you're really prone or if you have a lot of vaginal discomfort or sensitivity, the Femcap might be a better option for you. I just have a question. Can your partner or partners feel the diaphragm or the cervical cap with their fingers or penis um, during sexy times? Generally, the answer is no. Um, some partners said that they kind of sort of felt the, the cervical cap, but I've never really heard any reports that that was unsatisfactory or that that was annoying or that was difficult or it changed sex in any way. Uh, definitely with activities like fingering or that kind of thing, um, you might be a little more sensitive because the tips of our fingers are quite sensitive. But again, it's not one of those things that I, I have heard anybody finding uh, a lot of discomfort with. Um, <clears throat> the diaphragm especially has a very thin, very flexible covering, so it's, it's really um, quite invisible to, to the partner of the person who's having sex. Can you talk a little bit about the side effects? Are there more or less side effects than other birth control options? Other than the issue with uh, UTIs and the diaphragm, if you're a person who's prone to UTIs, there isn't really any other sort of side effects that can happen with these devices. The only other side effect, effect I can think of is if you're allergic to any of the ingredients in the ContraGels. But again, the ContraGel is a very gentle product, so it's, it's unlikely that you're going to have sensitivity. So how much are these products and where can I get them? Well, you can get them at Anari's Apothecary. This is the Reproductive Health Corner. Anari's Apothecary is located at 749 Dover Court Road, just north of Dover Court and Bloor and there's lots of other different kinds of products here. We sell essential oils, uh, herbs, different packaging for products, make for product making and that kind of thing. Um, there's also lots of DIY workshops that happen here as well as workshops in and around and related to reproductive and sexual health. So the price of the Femcap is 120 and that includes your first uh, ContraGel. ContraGel lasts uh, up to three months but it also depends on how often you use it. So if you're using it uh, quite a bit, then you might need to get it about once a month or so. And the ContraGel for one tube is in and around $30, and it does get cheaper the more tubes you buy at once. And the Kaya Diaphragm is $125, and that also includes your first tube of Kaya Diaphragm Gel. If you have any questions, feel free to contact myself, Tynanrea, at gmail.com, or you can check out my website at uh, www.tynanrea.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a little bit about uh, a larger range of birth control options that people don't often talk about. So leave a comment, did anything surprise you? Do you have any questions about birth control? Any video suggestions for more videos that I could make about it? Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you aren't already, and have a lovely day.